Don't even worry about it. I'm gonna start setting shit straight. Don't even worry about it. Oh, no. Oh, this way to go. We got an escapee. Oh. <laughs> I have the right to identify you. You understand okay. that, right? Then you can search up my face and you can search up my record. Okay. There's a prison here? Yeah. Huh. Catch your killers. Cops are skilled professionals trained to sense trouble. What happens when these law enforcement I'm experts coming. find themselves outsmarted right before their eyes? I promise you, I'm not no damn prison escaping. You'd have done wrong by now. <laughs> Here are five instances of cops being played in their own game. Bro, what should I order to eat? Starting right? with the case of Richard McNair, who is currently standing with Officer Carl Bordelon. Should we get McDonald's? Richard was running on a railroad oh, track near Ball, Louisiana. Officer Bordelon had received information about a prison break, and he wanted to ensure that Richard hadn't seen anyone or if he was the individual Officer Bordelon was looking for. You, you live around here, boy? No. Where you live at? Down the road by uh, Pineville. Pineville? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form of identification on you? No, man. What's I your name? Know. Robert Jones. Robert Jones? Uh-huh. Why I'm not supposed to be on the tracks? No, that's not the problem right now. Where you, what's your address? I don't have an address. I'm at the hotel. We're working on uh, houses and stuff. I got the roofing. Roofing? Yep. Right. From the beginning of the conversation, Richard attempts to project an air of calmness and composure while interacting with the officer. He conscientiously responds to each question, but there's a noticeable lack of conviction in his answers. When asked about his residence, Richard responds with a vague, down the road, leaving the officer intrigued. Sensing evasion, Richard quickly adds that he's a worker on a project, possibly deflecting from his lack of area familiarity, and to heighten the intrigue, he throws in living in a hotel weaving an alternative narrative to sidestep scrutiny. These subtle moves reveal Richard's calculated effort to keep up a facade of normalcy. What is, we got an escapee. Oh, shit. <laughs> Where from? Uh, prison. There's a prison here? Yeah. Huh. Man, it's hot. I seen this video years ago. I remember this nigga cooked his dumb ass. Subject wore glasses? Nothing about glasses. Can you find out? I'm out with a white male on the tracks at uh, Gilly Williams. Remaining composed, Richard provides the officer with straightforward answers and maintains a relaxed demeanor to avoid appearing anxious or unsettled. When the officer tells Richard, we got an escapee, Richard, instead of reacting with alarm, stays calm and maintains his facade of innocence rhetorically asking, there's a prison here. Unbeknownst to the officer, the Robert Jones that he is talking to is, in fact, Richard, the escapee from prison, the very person the officer is looking for. Any tattoos or anything? Yeah. Flip it over. No, no, I'm just... No, he's clean. Oh, I'm 50 years old. <laughs> how old is your guy? You're how old? 50. I was born in 56. He said born in 56. 58. Uh, any kind of deep? Appreciate your DRB. Tells yeah, you can give me, huh? Uh, what color you got? Green. Well. Kind of a turquoise blue. Turquoise blue? Yeah. <laughs> you wanna give me some more? <laughs> <laughs> Call my little brother, man. <laughs> Do I? No, it, it's not. <laughs> no. No, it's uh, short, short hair. My guy's got skin cut hair. He's got a beard, well, uh, a goatee like. While many guilty suspects typically respond with concise and cautious replies I'm when the facing the my life to become a cop so that someday I can pull you over police you Richard a took a different search. approach. Right, he was intent on presenting himself as an ordinary individual, providing fur responses and even making jokes with the officer. I guarantee I'm not no You know the bad thing about it? What's that? You're matching up to him. <laughs> well, that sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. Um what are you saying at? That uh Titus feel or Titus in? Titus in little old. Little, uh, Where's that at? I don't even know the address. We just got into town about a week ago, and he dropped me off to jog. I always jog about 12 miles a day. Where'd he drop you off at? Up there on that road by, uh, there's some construction going on up there, some houses. Uh-huh. And he dropped me off, and, uh, he'll be back to the hotel in about probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Who do y'all work for? It's his, it's his, uh... I know, what's the name Ruffin, of the company? Fields Brooklyn. Okay. Fields Brooklyn. This nigga, this nigga, this nigga lying, man. Just shot that nigga in this fucking pectoral muscle. Did you go through a broad patch or something? Well, yeah, roofing. I always roofing shorts and 
cut my uh, scratching up on, you know, the roof. And That's stuff. why your knees are all cut up? Yeah. Or y'all got pads? Huh? Y'all wear pads? Hell no. Too hot. They rub your, the pads rub your back of your legs and stuff. Um, where are you from? Huh? We're originally Dallas, Texas. I mean, that's where you, y'all yeah, stay at. That's where we're out of. Out of Dallas, Texas. But what's your name again? Jimmy Jones. While talking with Richard. Nigga said Jimmy Jones. Ain't that a sandwich place? John Jones, Jimmy Jones. Ain't that a sandwich place? This motherfucker lying. Your officer Carl noticed cuts on Richard's knees. Jimmy Jones? Possibly from a barbed wire. And those nut cuts on your knees, that shit gay. During the escape. However, Richard dispelled suspicions by claiming the cuts were from construction work. Despite the potential giveaway, Officer Carl appeared to buy into Richard's story. Another major red flag that the officer seemed to have missed was when asked Richard his name again, he provided a completely different one, Jimmy Jones. Ordinarily, this inconsistency should have been a dead giveaway, but Officer Carl didn't seem to notice it. Now, uh, when I crossed the tracks down there, I saw you running, I said, well, how lucky can I be? <laughs> Where's y'all's motel at? Okay, let me think now, because like I say, uh, fuel always drives. Okay, Walmart's right there. Go right at Walmart, and there's a road. That, is it 165? Right. 165 that goes south, and we're about two blocks. Two blocks. Fuel versus. Code four. I need a mod in chat right quick. I got a question. Get ready. Get ready to ban that. Little old tiny hotel. I mean, it's clean, but it, and the it's family owned. Little old tiny hotel. Yeah, you know, like a motel deal. You park up there. I promise you, I'm not no damn curious in this KP. You'd have done run by now. <laughs> you know that yourself. <laughs> You'd have done run by now. Well, I'm sorry to have to hold you up, but. Hey, no, I'm just doing my job, man. No, you are. But, um, yeah, just be careful. You'll probably get stopped again, okay? okay. Don't, don't. Be alarmed What's by your phone number, your cell phone number, so I can have whoever call you. Just call. You got a cell phone with you? No, hell no. I don't even have a cell phone or anything. Just call 911 is all you got to do, and they'll get a hold to us. All right. That's hey. our quick line there. Have a good day now. Be careful, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, you should have fired this stupid donut eating mother. All right. This was the last time Richard was seen for the next 18 months. How 18 months? However, later in October 2007, Richard was finally caught and apprehended in New Brunswick after he was identified driving a stolen vehicle. Richard might- Bro, he had the shit clutched. All he had to do was just stay low. Why was you driving a stolen, you stupid- He have gotten lucky with his escape, however, the same cannot be said about the next person we'll cover. Bro, all he had to do was chill. Why was he driving a, a, driving a stolen- a, 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 a. Damn that nigga fast. On October 18, 2019, 17-year-old Quantrell was arrested from his classroom at Orfordville Park U High on suspicion of strangulation in an August August 1st assault. He was brought in for questioning in the Rock County Sheriff's Office and placed- Me bam. Me bam. Let me see your 10 messages, that's all you been saying? Yeah, you gone. In the interview room. However, as soon as the teenager entered the room, it became clear that he had no intention of staying. Damn, this nigga opened up the window immediately. Oh, no! As soon as the detective leaves him, Quantrell scans the room and finds a window. Without thinking twice, he opens the blinds and pushes the window before diving headfirst from 12 feet up. CCTV outside the building capture him making a run for it. There's no way he landed that shit.
However, Currentrell wasn't the only one who was daring enough to escape from the police. How the f did he land that? On March 7th, 2022, Joel, I think I've seen this video. Joel Sanchez Delgado, a 41-year-old facing drug trafficking charges, was escorted to a courtroom in Little Rock for a routine appearance. He was seen wearing a neck brace and using a wheelchair, supposedly due to injuries he supposedly sustained during his arrest. However, as you'll see, Joel wasn't actually injured. The wheelchair was a calculated move to outsmart the authorities. What say, OJ? My suit. Hey, you see a shoe back there? Where is it? Oh. No, this nigga got loose. Aren't they supposed to lock your dad's down to the wheelchair? No, he got loose. Look, he loose. Reggie Bush. That's Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Yo, this police officer is slow as shit. Oh, I'm gonna catch you, baby. I'm finna shoot your ass. Oh, nah. Did you just say I'm about to shoot your... See, then they wonder why we hate they ass. You gonna shoot him in his back because he just run away? You already know he has no weapons. You just detained him. He going to jail. Come on, man. Oh, I'm gonna catch you, baby. I'm finna shoot your ass. They trying to put in all of them. We know what he just said. As they and he called Approach the courthouse entrance, Joel asks the officer about his missing shoe, creating a distraction that allows him to swiftly leap out of the chair and sprint away with the officer in pursuit. Reggie Bush. Realizing he lacks his radio, the officer can't- All the officer had to do, I'm gonna get y'all game right here, right? The chair and sprint away with the officer in pursuit. What he did right here, if the officer was really about that life of his job, he could have lunge tackled over this railing. Don't, he did the, the, the Superman movie shit. He could have just tackled that nigga right there. He could have just jumped over lunge tackle. Boom. Over. That quick. Realizing you. Boom. Right there. He had his ass. Boom. Lashes. He tried to be in some, on some Martin Lawrence national security bullshit. Radio then the that's why he got cooked. Call for backup or alert his colleagues, giving Joel an advantage in escaping. Look, that nigga already down the street. Only one officer instead of an entire squad. Hey, can you call the police for me? Call nigga, you is the police. Call the police for me. Hey, call the police. God, what way it go? This mother you is! Call this, you, motherfucker! This way! Go! Oh. You got your phone? God damn! Joel successfully outran him. The officer being unable to contact backup gave Joel extra time to distance himself from the police. We went straight through the alley and cut that way. What's you in your phone? My damn radio came out. Hold on. Take my money out. Damn, little nigga. I tried to come behind you and get him. I don't know. Damn, nigga, you snitching. The way it went. Although the officer eventually informed his colleagues using a civilian's phone, it was too late. Joel had already hopped into a cab and made his escape, leaving the officer powerless at that moment. And I tried to get him. Hello? Hey, who? The wheelchair dude got up and ran. Yeah. I couldn't catch his ass. And my radio was in the I had my camera on, though. The wheelchair dude. I couldn't catch him. Hell. See him pulled off. Joel's freedom, however, was short-lived as just a few hours later, he was caught and charged with felony escape, which will add five more years to his sentence along with other charges. Damn, you get five years for getting loose? You get five years for getting loose? Damn, they be f***ing niggas up, bro, with that shit. Damn. And this is Delgado now, after a taxi cab ride to West 65th Street. Damn, they got that nigga full on lockdown. The 41-year-old is being wheeled into an ambulance, claiming to be injured and unable to walk. Investigators say he caught that taxi cab outside a hotel along Broadway. He's expected to face escape charges. Laura, I'm told he's back in the Pulaski County Jail tonight, and I'm told he was booked in while in a wheelchair yet again. While Joel was convicted because of his criminal past, what happens when the only... Hold on, y'all. My door is about to get here. We're going to finish the video after I eat... Damn. When I get my McDonald's, we're going to come back.
We won't finish the video. The criminal involved in a police encounter is the police themselves. If you try and come past me, you're gonna go on the ground face first. You understand okay, me? Okay, and then I'm gonna file a complaint against you. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yes. On September 29, 2019, police rushed to a scene sparked by a heated exchange between Michael Franchick and his neighbor. Trouble brew when Michael's 15-year-old son, Jack, was cruising on a gas-powered bicycle and the neighbor allegedly irate issued threats of physical confrontation. Amidst the tension, a third-party caller dropped a bombshell, claiming Michael had a concealed gun. The surgeon relayed this startling detail over the radio, setting the stage for what was meant to be a civil and consensual conversation with Michael. Can I help you? Hello, are you, uh, Michael? Hi, uh, can I help you something? Yeah, uh, we're here about a... And your name? Officer Rodriguez. Uh, first name? Jim. Jim, how are you, Jim? Can, can and I... your name? Please? Sure. Uh, sorry, badge number? Badge number, okay. please? Let, let's go ahead and talk about the incident that you had out here a few minutes I... ago. Don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Step down here for me. Nothing. Yeah. No, no. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 Hey. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hi. Well, Jack, report this. Grab my phone and report this. Whoa, I'm injured. As the officers approach Michael, he refuses to talk about the incident and attempts to go back inside his house. The officers, however, without any legal cause, force their way into Michael's home after him and attempt to drag him out. Michael refuses to go outside, but now agrees to talk to the officers inside the house. Officer Rodriguez, however, either didn't hear the agreement or didn't care and continued to force him outside. At this point, Michael's son, Jack, begins recording the whole ordeal on his cell phone. I am cooperating. You're hey, violating stop. my Fourth Amendment hey. rights. Oh, stop. Outside. You're violating my Fourth Amendment hey, rights. Hey, you guys cannot come in here without a search warrant. Get the phone. Get the phone. I'm videoing. Get the phone. I'm cooperating. I'm cooperating. I'm not fighting you. I'm not fighting you. Outside now. Walk outside so we can talk. Okay, 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 okay. Enough. 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 I didn't do anything. You just tased me for no reason. Outside. What are you doing? No, no. What, what am I being stop detained for? Outside. What am I being detained for? Just stop resisting. I'm not Just resisting. I'm not resisting. Hey, no, don't take his phone. No. Don't take his phone. Don't take his phone. Man. I just stepped outside with a hairbrush. I got lit up. I'm good. I'm good. I've chilled the whole time. The officer attempts to take Jack's phone away from him to stop him from recording the incident. Jack, follow me and report. Yeah. Right this way. Follow me and report. Give us space. I'm not. Give us space. Okay. No, What's, your space? Space. What's your space? What's your space? Jack, Jack, record the whole thing. Does this look like enough space? You saw the whole thing. It's all been recorded. It is. I didn't resist. I know. I didn't do it. You know. See, no you pickles. Know. I didn't resist, Jack. Yeah, I have it on video. I didn't resist. Well, we asked you to stop, right? I did. I didn't do anything against your instructions. You came. This guy came into my house. Without a warrant, without any probable okay. cause. Let me just talk for a second. I said, I don't know anything, and he tackled me in my and house. He told you to stop, right? He did not say anything of the sort. Officer, it's all I on video. the whole thing, it's and it's on video. video so. It's all on video. It is. It's all on video. It is. Dude, he, that guy is out of control. Okay. I'm finally Officer. complaining against him. Officer. I want him nowhere near me. Okay. That guy is crazy. Officer. It's between you, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm fine. Shh. Okay. No, no, he can no. talk. He can talk. No, I can talk because I was in the situation. No, I'm not gonna arrest him. Okay, then calm down. Then just what? Okay. What? Like, well, he want to talk. talk to you? He recorded the whole thing. This guy okay. is out Let's of speak. control. Okay. What's hey, your badge? What's your, what's your name? Step back. I'm look, not. Look. Nah, the little kid is doing the right thing because he know what the fuck he's doing. Look, look, he I'm just touched me. You can you. record all you want, but you're one. stepping back Everyone. right now. This guy, I'm back. Hey, hey, hey. Don't back. touch me. Stop harassing me. We're just trying to... We're just I'm trying videoing to this. You can, please get out of my personal space. No. Yes? You're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna interfere with what we're doing. Get out of my personal space. This is my property. What the f*** wrong with this nigga hand, bruh? Get out of my personal space. No. Yes? You're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna interfere with... Ew, nigga! 
That's I'm what we're doing. This, this is my property. Please you're not going to interfere with an arrest. I'm chill. I've been chill. You can record all you want, but you're not going to get close to it. I'm on my property. Move out of my personal space. Please. I'm going to stand right here. This is my personal square. Please move. I'm going to stand right here. Please move. You're in my personal space. No. What's your name? Yeah, I do not need to give you that. Yeah, you do. We might go on Poppy Playtime. Actually, you know what? Let's finish this video. I'm hungry. Jack, For what no, reason? Jack, don't do because you're involved I know. In this. Don't, don't I'm, I'm involved with this, yes. But this guy threatened me and called the cops on you. And what's your what's your badge number? What's your name? What's your badge number? Okay, so end it. Of course. Yep. Badge number. That says name. 3K12. Okay. Now, what's your name? I'm not making any statements. You're not making any statements? Nope. Okay, I have the right to identify you. You understand okay. that, right? Then you can search up my face. You can search up my record. Okay. Okay. Well, you're going to sit tight for me. You're okay. Not going anywhere. I can go in my house no, if I want. No, Am I detained? You're detained. For what reason? For what? That guy threatening me? Why isn't that guy going to jail? That guy threatened to beat me in his ass. So. What? For what? That guy threatening me? Why isn't that guy going to jail? That guy threatened to beat me in his ass. Pause. So that's, why aren't you guys arresting him? That's not the why are you talking? Yeah, he can just lie. Jack, yeah. Jack, step back and keep recording. I'm literally step in my and space, and this guy's just touching me. I didn't touch you at all. I have it on video. I've been recording this whole time, buddy. Okay. Despite his young age, Jack handles the situation with impressive poise. His clear understanding of his rights shines through, as he knows he doesn't have to identify himself unless suspected of criminal activity. This awareness keeps him steadfast and unintimidated by the officers. Jack continues to record his father's arrest as two officers try to block him. Do not step forward. What did hey, I just tell please you? Please get out of my space. I do not have okay. to. You then cannot I'm... interfere with what we're doing. I'm not interfering when I'm on my don't, property. Don't step towards the car. I'm not. Then you move out did of my step way. towards the car. I told okay. you not to. You tried to run from it. What's your name? Officer Ware. Okay, what's your that name? That nigga chop, bro. Bring him over there. It's Officer Proctor. Okay, I, I didn't go over it. Don't. Hey! 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 Stay back. I'm going in my house. Stay back. I'm going in. If you try and come past me, you're going to go on the ground face first. Do you understand okay, me? Okay, and then I'm going to so, file a complaint go, against you. Go grab your camera. Yes. I'm allowing you to do that, but you cannot walk in my house. Nah, he cooking though. Let the kid, let the kid cook. Okay. Bye. Mm-hmm. I have three cops on me and I'm 15 years old. Because you guys intruded my house. So you were the one driving up and down the street on the motorcycle? Uh, I was on my gas bicycle. Okay, that's a gas powered vehicle. You have to have a driver's license. Um, no, you don't. Yes, you do. Not when it's 50cc and you have a permit for it. Once again, Jack is correct. Motorized bicycles are not required to have a license as long as they are under 50cc and don't go over 30 miles per hour. The officers then walk away and talk among themselves to discuss what Michael can be charged with. At this point, I don't even really even care what their story is. I no, mean, I'm. I believe our independent witness. And, and given their demeanor, the question is, you know, I want to talk to him to see if there's any threat with the gun, but he would have mentioned that, I'll bet. She said she didn't see it until he was walking back over here. But he said he saw it too? Oh, he, no? no, no. Okay. He didn't so she it. didn't say anything about it, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to suggest it. I just wanted, what did you see? And that's what he told me, and that's so what she told me. That? No, he didn't. Okay. Well, if he didn't threaten anyone with it, there's no... I don't no, think it was just a concern for me. To, oh, no, absolutely. But nigga saying L ass, get your money up, not your funny up, bitch ass niggas. I don't think there's any reason to try right now want to get in the house. No. We'll identify him through him. I'll just do TLO or whatever. Okay. And then the friend, I've got his information, their statements. I couldn't care less because they're not no. cooperative. I'll just refer to the juvenile courts. If they want to screen him for charges, great. And if they for don't. Rallying the motorcycles or whatever. Yeah. All right. I mean, I doubt that goes anywhere, but, you know. Yeah. Right. Oh, I would've... my stomach hurt. Oh, chat, chat. I started rushing, bro. My stomach. Uh, uh. Uh. Oh.
Bro, did y'all really think I was dead or nah? Did y'all think I was dead? Y'all saying yeah? Oh nah. Man, it might have been crazy. But what would y'all do though? What I've done is talk to everybody and it's a he says, she said, I would have written it up and said, here's the report. That looks and then he does this garbage. I'm good for him. I'm gonna arrest him for uh, failure to obey a lawful command, resisting uh, disorderly. Yeah, disorders, that's good because it got her attention too. Yeah. The surgeon dismisses Michael and Jack's side of the story, citing their demeanor. However, acknowledging Michael's concealed carry permit, they assert his entitlement to carry a gun unless he brandished it in a threatening manner, an allegation that no one, not even the neighbor, has made. Meanwhile, Officer Proctor was taking Jack's account of the incident. He goes, he goes, that bike is illegal. I said, no, it's not. It's a 50cc bicycle, and I have a permit for it. Okay. And he said, get out of the way. He was on his little road bike. He said, get out of the way. I'm going to beat your ass. So I don't, if you guys want to believe him, no, and we have two witnesses, he has zero. Okay, calm down. Just calm down, calm down. No, I'm like, pissed off because oh, you guys no. just came in our house. Okay. But we tried to come here to ask a question and figure out what was going on because what we got told is a gun was involved in this incident. So we're no going to take this a little bit. No, gu no gun was involved, not okay. at all. I don't know why you have to then what beat happened? my ass. And I rode my bicycle back here. He ran back with me. I closed the garage and I told my dad. Okay. My dad was like, who is this? I, I'm, I, if, if anything goes farther, I'm going to have to call the police. He, come, he walks outside to see where the guy is. Your, and, your dad? Mm -hmm. okay. And the guy comes out and he steps and he, like, for instance, he walks and he goes like this. He walks right here in front of his face. So right here or like, down there? No, no, right down there. Okay. At the corner where you guys were parked down there. Okay. And he walks up right to his face like this. And he said, step back because you're violating my like his personal space, one. And two, if he steps one more close or he touches him he he has the right to defend himself and that is easily the right to defend himself so there's no reason why he says a gun is involved it wasn't him that said it he doesn't even know about it this was a completely other parties that were watching the whole thing happen that nigga yeah. there was no gun involved okay. well i'm just saying what we were told and it was tucked in his back waistband slash pocket and they seen it as he's walking away so that's so i'm just telling you we can only go off the information we're providing i understand yeah. that okay so, but we have two witnesses that were literally like on site and we're telling you the truth and he's telling you the truth. So. Michael was charged with two misdemeanors, interfering with an arresting officer and failure to disclose identity. Those sentences could lead to six months in jail if Franchek was convicted. In September 2021, Michael filed a civil lawsuit against Park City and the officers involved in the incident, seeking over a million dollars in a public apology. Damn. Two of the four officers involved in the incident were terminated. While the Michael Franchik case is a clear example of police misconduct, it is not the first time they convicted an innocent civilian. The evidence I have is fr frankly conclusive and overwhelming, okay? On August 15, 2003, Hamilton police arrested Michael Dixon, 37, from the Hamilton bus stand on suspicion of robbing a jewelry store. However, a discrepancy arose as the witness report described the suspect as a short white man, while Michael was neither short nor white. Despite this, he was taken to the Hamilton Police Station for questioning. Sorry, to keep you waiting, Michael. That's great. Nigga like David Goggins. What you mean, a short white man? Uh, it's been long two days. Uh, this is one of our interview rooms here at uh, Hamilton Police, and this is audio and videotaped. You know, no, it's not Damn, this shit made my stomach hurt, dude. Uh, video camera. Microphones. Microphones on the wall. So everything we say and do is recorded mm -hmm. that's for both of our benefit and okay. benefits everybody right off the bat we can see that michael adopts a forward-leaning posture which indicates that he is confident and relaxed he maintains eye contact with the detective throughout the interrogation michael has read his miranda rights and assures the detective that he will be cooperative and help the detective with the investigation you are not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so but whatever you do say may be given in evidence well, that's fine, because what I have to say is, I plead my innocence, so I don't mind that being. Okay. But uh, I'm just curious to know, like, how it got this far, because, as I said to you earlier in the other room, the police officers that were stopped me on the street said that they had witnesses, and I... Well, in the, you, you wanted to talk to me about the events in the other room, yeah. and I told you that... Uh, that wasn't the right time and place to discuss it, remember right. that? Yeah. This nigga yeah. here bald as shit, man! Damn, boy! Uh, have this. 
Nigga head glistening like a motherfucker. There's one other thing I have to tell you before we discuss this, okay? Okay. And that's that if you've spoken to any police officer or to anyone with authority or if any such person has spoken to you in connection with this case, I want it clearly understood that I don't want it to influence you in making any statement. Michael oh, tries to remind head. the detective of the witness report, however, for some reason, the detective decides to reject the evidence altogether. Why we're here is because earlier tonight, you were arrested for breaking out of the UK? store in John Street South. Um, now, the, your innocence and guilt in this, quite frankly, uh, isn't an issue. Uh, the evidence I have is, fr frankly, conclusive and overwhelming. Okay? Um, so I'm not even going to ask you if you did it. What, I'm, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. Um, whether, whether this is... No, nah, that's got to be racist. Like a serial burglar, and this is what you're doing all the time, or whether this is a one-off thing because of the power cut and everything that's going on tonight. That's that's all we're here for. Um, okay, I understand your position. Like I yeah. say here, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and you've heard that a million times that you're in your career, but it's just... Ask me questions, that's all I can do is answer them, I guess. I had to turn nigga show me the evidence. I've got no questions to ask you. I mean, why, why did okay. you do it? That's, that's basically, yeah, that's, that's my only question. Boy, I'd have been so quiet. It got lured up so fast. That they would, that hold the police. My name would be on the front of that police department by the time I'm done. I'd have just sat back and said, no problem. Keep me here for 15 hours straight. I ain't saying nothing. On my mama, boy. I'm coming from that position and I'm... Ooh, man, made my booty hole hurt. What the fuck? Bro, my prostate just started hurting, bruh. <sighs> bro, what the f wrong with this food, nigga? Bro, instead of putting question marks, I should be checking if I'm good. Shit making my prostate hurt, bruh. And since I'm saying I didn't do it, I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. Well, I guess we haven't really got a... Really? A, a great amount of thought yeah. to go out. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, the whether you did it or not is an album for the discussion. Okay, well... Um, it's really not. Michael seems confused by this statement, and understandably so. The detective is bluffing. There is no evidence to suggest that Michael is the culprit. Even the suspect description in the witness report suggests otherwise. While it may seem illegal, the police are allowed to lie during an investigation to put pressure on the suspect and force a confession out of them. In this case, however, Michael knows he's innocent and sees right through the detective's bluff. He maintains a forward-leaning posture and an eye contact, making the detective slightly uncomfortable as he switches his position and breaks eye contact. There's a number, a number of witnesses. Great. One of whom had a video camera. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, that's relieving. That's relieving. relieving. Be quite honest. Yeah. So view the video camera. I have. Okay. That's why your guilt isn't in an in, in issue here. Yeah. That doesn't even make sense to me. Because if I'm on the video camera, Why am I being questioned? That doesn't make sense. You have a video camera that shows me? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That makes perfect sense to me. Uh, what happened? I guess I have no choice but to be the lawyer then. If this is the kind of thing you're going to go this through is, with me. This, I mean, isn't, this isn't going to go away. You're, you're, you're charged with breaking in. You will be charged tonight. That. Okay. You will be going to court in the morning. Uh, charged with breaking in with intent. Okay, that that's... That's what's going to happen right now. Can I ask you something? Okay, are you just making this up that you have a video camera so you see how I react? Because it goes that been... if you're saying, okay, let me up for a second, please. If no, I, just I am smart. guilty. Why are you questioning me? Because you believe, because you have me on video camera, then okay, we'll go through the procedure. But I'm saying, I, I, you know, I'm trying to call your bluff here because since I know I didn't do it, there's no way I can be on the video camera. Well, like I say, this isn't so, game of, it's not a game of poker. Okay. The detective won't let up. He thinks that by lying to Michael about having evidence and eyewitnesses, he can scare him into confessing a crime he didn't commit. However, Michael, steadfast in his innocence, remains unmoved, easily seen through the web of lies the detective is weaving. He maintains his innocence for the next few minutes, and the detective asks him to draw out a map and specify his movements before the arrest. 
Every detail of his alibi was later proven to be accurate. Maybe a dotted line that's your path. How's that? Sure. And uh, another dotted line where the, where the police officers come from. Okay, this is the, the tunnel, the bridge. Okay. And come at the bus station. So which way steps. is north towards the lake? Uh, the, the north. Okay. And so I came here. The car, the EMS truck or whatever ambulance it was, was there. It went off, crossed here, and crossed here. That's it. Okay, did you come straight from the bus? Yeah, absolutely. Like I even looked, I said, maybe you should take a cab. I'm like, oh no. So, so you yeah. came straight off of the bus? Yeah. Are you cooking his dumb ass? That's it, but the bus is. Ooh. Here you go, bald head. That's it. It's like I was off the bus, like maybe what, two minutes? So how, how long before you were arrested did you, were you off of the bus? That's what I'm saying, like from there to there, it's like not even two minutes. Did you uh, go any stop or do anything uh, in the uh, in the interview? I was walking, I was trying to see oh, the dark. Oh, my stomach is bubbling! Oh. Uh, I'm going to get mugged, and that's about it. So where, where, were, you, where were you when you first became aware of the, the people who subsequently oh, well, were police officers? Okay, well, there's a building here in the corner. Uh, there's another building here. There might have been some, I think I, yeah, actually I was walking. I saw a, fla a flashlight or something there, and I can hear. Oh, my stomach muscles are contracting. Oh. You're hollering, and then someone else is here, and that person, or maybe, I don't know, maybe that person ran, I'm not sure. But, uh, anyways, oh, I was approached here. Okay. From the information that I've got, you, you're going to be charged tonight with breaking in. Mm -hmm. However, I do have a duty to make sure that the truth mm -hmm. is, and the truth, basically, the truth is paramount. And the true the true version mm -hmm. of events of Paramount, and I have a duty um, to investigate all of this, and I will investigate. Okay. I assure you, I'll investigate this story thoroughly, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, um, I'll be able to find something here all right. which will either prove or disprove mm -hmm. you're entitled to under the Constitution of Canada, mm -hmm. and that uh, you're treated decently, and uh, that the truth comes out. Yeah, basically, well, that's being doubted until proven innocent. That's, I guess. The here, right? From my point of view. So. Okay, so that, that's that's my the, the, the things that I look for. I know. Okay, cool. Michael had to spend three days in jail and had a curfew for nine months before all the charges were eventually dropped. Oh, Michael no. sued the county police and received over one hundred thousand dollars in damages, while the interrogating officer was demoted and suspended without pay. Fuck that! Only a hundred thousand? Man, y'all better put my mother name on the front of this jail for me a hundred million, nigga. Well, I'm coming through my pipe and all y'all. With BBC, nigga. I'm a real nigga. So I'm going to pipe your with BBC. There's no if and buts about it. This nigga's talking about. Uh.